Hi guys, here I'm going to show you a really helpful tip for working with cells and worksheets in Excel VBA and macros. After this tutorial, you will no longer be selecting cells or activating worksheets in order to do something with them. This is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. So the common problem that a lot of people run into when they start creating macros is that they select a cell before they do something with it. So I want to do something here or get this value, so I select it and get it out. And they do the same thing with worksheets. So I want to get something from the more data worksheet. Okay, well, logically speaking, it kind of makes sense that I want to select it or activate it first because here when I see the screen, I have to do the same thing. Go over here and click this. Now I can see the value. I can get the value from it. But VBA, using a macro, you don't have to do that. It doesn't need to see, quote unquote, this worksheet or select this cell. So that's what I'm going to show you how to fix today. First, let's do a very simple example. Let's say, I'll zoom in, make it a little bit easier. We want to get the sales for store one January. So I'm going to get this, make a very simple macro, and just output it in a little pop-up window. So let's hit Alt F11 to go to the VBA window. Okay, go to Insert, Module, and let's create a simple macro, Sub, Simple Macro, Enter, okie dokie. First, I'm going to write the macro the wrong way, which is the way that you're oftentimes going to see it, especially if you go to forums and message boards and try and get help. So we want to get a value from cell B3. Okay, so B3, go back to VBA window. All right, so a lot of times you see something like this. Range B3 dot, it could be activate or range b3 dot select they're essentially both going to do the same thing so if i comment out that one range b3 activate let's go back here and go over here all right run the macro alt f8 simple macro selects the cell comment this one out go back Run the macro. Oops, I forgot to select away. Run the macro. And you can see they both go to the cell. And now let's put this cell into a little variable. Let's just call it my value. My value equals. Oh, here's how it's done. Selection dot value. Okay, so we have select the cell, store the cell value, and here we have output the cell. So I'm going to output the cell into a little message box, very simple, MSG, BLX, space, and then what do we want to output? Output my value. Okay, so it's going to work like this. Let's go back to the spreadsheet, select away run the macro, it selected the cell, got the value 11723 and popped into the message box window. So that is the bad way to do it. I mean, it works. Yes, it works. Okay. But the annoying thing is then if I work with another cell, I have to go select that cell and that cell and that cell. And it's a real pain and it's stupid. And if you have a large macro, if you're looping through a lot of things, this is why it's stupid. It's going to slow down the worksheet, slow down the macro significantly. So let's save ourselves some headache and some time. I'm going to put a little thing up here. Let's say my comment skills are amazing, aren't they? Bad method. Okay. And I will comment out each one of these lines and leave it in here so that when you go to download the workbook from teachexcel.com, you can just have all the examples. Actually, let's change simple macro to uh, get 
actually let's just call it cell value okay so good method all right it's very very simple I could if I wanted to put it all in one line make it really easy message message box range b3 dot value that's going to work exactly the same way and hit alt f8 run the macro you can see it didn't select a cell didn't do anything still an e1 and we have 11 723 perfect easy peasy so what i did there and actually what i'm going to do is break it up into two segments so we can have one to get the value oops my value okay and two to output the value so what you can see here is that we don't need to do any of this selecting or any of this activating crap skip it it's not needed just tell Excel which thing you're working with what cell am I working with this cell what do I want to do with that cell whatever the hell I want I want to get the value okay cool now here I'm just putting this value into a variable and then here I want to output the value of that variable okay cool that's it there is no selection required just get that through your head now no selection reference the cell you're done do something with it so just hit a period and do whatever you want with it and I'm not going to cover it too much in this actually at all in this tutorial but just know you can do ranges in here you can do uh, named ranges so if I had a named range called uh, let's say we're doing with finance present value and that's an refers to a cell within the worksheet well you could type that in there and reference it that way it is so so easy and there's other ways to reference it as well you could use cells instead of range so I could do something like my value one equals cells one one first number for the row second number for the column then dot value now I'm not going to cover how to do that in this tutorial how to use cells it's a bit more complex than a range but it's super cool really helpful and so that's all you need to do now what I'm going to do so this is the good method I'm gonna leave it uncommented you just reference a cell do whatever you want to do with it if you don't need to store the value you don't have to put it into you don't have to put it into a variable here so if you were gonna deal with formatting you just start typing it like this if you've recorded a macro ever you're gonna see something like this underline equals and then whatever here there's a bunch of options and now let's go to the second macro and let's deal with the worksheets so here we have more data and let's do the same thing let's get a value from store one July over here so it is cell g3 value 1268 okay and let's do it from this tab over here so this was cell value let's type worksheets cell value okay these names are not the most helpful so bad method essentially it's the same thing what a lot of and actually you may have noticed that there is no worksheet reference here so this means that you're going to work with a cell on the exact same worksheet and you'll see what I mean with that once we finish this next next example so bad method go to the worksheets sheets more data so just the name of the worksheet dot activate now let's get the value my value equals and I did forget what it was what was it g3 okay g3 dot value oh we forgot to select the cell also right <laughs> if you wanted to you could do a little cell selection right here so I, I once you realize never to do this you'll kind of forget uh, that you ever did it this very slow way and you'll stop doing it 
very quickly. Okay, dot select and then selection dot value. Okay, <laughs> now output the guy message box my value. Bad method, but it should work. So we go here, we hit Alt F8, we run worksheet cell value, run it. We are now here on the more data worksheet. G3 has been selected and we get the value 12689 right here in the pop-up window. Cool, nice, but I don't wanna to go to this worksheet. That's stupid. Let's stay on this worksheet. I wanna run the macro from here and get the value. So now let's combine what we learned in the last example with this one. So let's do good method. God, my good method. Okay. And I'll show you how to do it in one line really quickly if you wanted to. Message box. Very simply, all you have to do is to put the name of the worksheet in front of the cell reference. Just like that. So let's go and comment these dudes out. And as usual, I will leave them in so that when you download the workbook, you have them here. Now let's run this one, see how it works. From the data worksheet, Alt F8, select the macro. 12689, perfect. Now this cell will still be selected because I didn't select away. So let's just make sure that also didn't do anything. 12,689, yep, over here, and it has not been selected. So we didn't navigate to the worksheet, we didn't select anything on the worksheet, we didn't do anything on that worksheet. We stayed here, the macro went all the way to that worksheet, did its work, and came back. Now let's go ahead and write this how you should write it. Let's get, get the value. My value equals, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy Yes, yes, yes. It wants something after the equal sign. So this code editor is very annoying. Okay, and put the value here. So here all we do is we get the value and we output it in a message box. So very simple, sheets and then you type the name of the sheet, or you can actually input the index number. So if you wanted to get the first sheet, the second sheet, the third sheet, you can do one, two, three, and it will go to that sheet. And you can see the order up here, one and two. So if I replaced this with a two, come on, it should work just fine. Go, go back here, okay, here, and here. Yep, easy peasy. The point of this tutorial is to show you that you should use these two lines instead of these four lines of code. No selecting, no activating, no navigating there. Now, of course, if you want to navigate to the worksheet to show the user the worksheet, then do that. Activate. If you want to select a cell, do that. Hit select. No problems. But you don't have to. There's no point in doing it. And the larger your macros get, the more complex it gets, the way more confusing it gets if you do that. You're actually just not even going to be able to make a large macro if you're selecting a bunch of different cells. It'll slow everything down. It's gonna cause a lot of problems. Now you don't need to store this in a variable, just like the previous example. You just have this guy, do whatever you want with it. In this case, since I wanna get a value from it, it, makes sense to store it in a variable, but you could you know, adjust the formatting settings, add filters, do whatever you want, and then you wouldn't need to type that in front of it. You just type whatever you want to do at the end of it, like this. So that's a little beyond this tutorial. The point is not that. And of course, here you could replace range with cells. So you can see that we're just sort of expanding the location reference. So we have the range, and then if you want to go for a different worksheet, the worksheet. But if you want to go for the same worksheet, you don't need this right here, just like the first example. The first example will work, this guy up here to get the cell value, it'll work on the currently visible or active worksheet. So if you wanted to make a macro like this, that just runs on whatever cells appear in the currently visible worksheet, then maybe you want to activate that worksheet beforehand. 
Otherwise, it's not going to run on the correct values. But like I said, you don't need to do that. So you can loop through every worksheet, get a thousand different values from all the worksheets, store them and output them in the very first sheet without activating any cell or activating any worksheet. Now, I've shown you how to do that in other tutorials. It's way beyond this tutorial. But the point of this tutorial is don't waste time selecting cells or other worksheets. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.